After traveling to 151 countries, the most discrimination that I face is still in the United States of America. Hi, my name is Jessica Nabongo, and I'm on a mission to become the first black woman to travel to every country in the world. So far, I've been to 151 countries of 195. So in the next eight months, I'm gonna travel to the last 44 countries to finish this quest. And on October 6, 2019, I will land in the Seychelles, my 195th country. And the reason I chose October 6 is because that is my father's birthday. And he passed 16 years ago, and I really wanted to to make him a part of this journey. As the daughter of Ugandan immigrants growing up in Detroit, Michigan, my parents instituted a love of travel in me and my sisters from a very young age. I've been traveling internationally since I was four years old, so I've always been curious about other cultures. Travel is so much a part of my lifeblood. So being American, and in particular being a black American, race is so much a part of my everyday life. And I think because of how we're socialized in the US, we go outside of the country thinking that race is a, a big deal everywhere else. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily the case. In the US, our country is so diverse, we forget that most of the world is homogenous. So a lot of times when I travel, people may point at me or they're smiling or you know they wanna take a picture with me or they just wanna get close to me in some way because they've never seen anyone who looks like me. People are just curious because they don't see people that look like me every single day. But I also think that you just have to be, you have to be tenacious and you have to be resilient. As a visible African woman who either is traveling on an American passport or a Ugandan passport, I get harassed by immigration in a number of different countries, including United States immigration. And it's incredibly frustrating dealing with people who are making assumptions about who I am simply based on the way that I look. So after traveling to 151 countries, the most discrimination that I face is still in the United States of America. I've been asked how I afford to pay for my travel um, without them even understanding everything that I'm doing. We're just trying to see the world just like everybody else. We are traveling for tourism. I'm trying to put a face to those people who look like me to help immigration around the world now that we just want to travel too. When it comes to issues with immigration, where I recognize that they're definitely being racist or like putting forward um, biases against certain nationalities, I speak out because if I don't do it, who is gonna do it? Yes, yeah, so I was in Nauru, which is one of the smallest countries in the world. It's a very tiny, tiny island located in the South Pacific. And we were going snorkeling in the harbor. From standing outside, we looked in and we saw dark patches, so we assumed there was some coral reef. But once we got in the water and we started snorkeling, we realized it was actually just plastic bottles that were at the bottom. <laughs> I just, I couldn't believe it. And when you look at the image, you'll see all of these dark spots that appear to be coral and it's, it's plastic. More than anything, what I've realized is the fact that we are on a single planet and these fictitious boundaries that we call countries, they don't matter because at the end of the day, we all have the same access to water resources. We are a global community and we can't only look at ourselves from a national perspective. Positive energy will save you from anything. Oftentimes I'm traveling alone as a woman. I've been to 47 countries as a woman by myself. I think being very, very open-minded is important. I don't go into places to affirm my assumptions about them. I go into places to ask questions. The other important thing when I travel abroad is really traveling with an open energy, which allows me to meet so many wonderful local people. So even though I do so much solo travel and it often doesn't feel like it because I'm meeting new friends everywhere that I'm traveling to. Mm. I fell in love with Uzbekistan because it was a complete surprise. It was such a beautiful country, so many beautiful mosques and other monuments, the architecture, the ceramics were just super beautiful, bright and colorful, the way that I live my life. I just, you know, thinking of Uzbekistan, I never would have considered it a place that I would have enjoyed so much. 
One place that I recommend everyone to visit has to be Kenya. Most people, when they think of Kenya, they think of safari, as you should. But beyond that, Nairobi is such an awesome city to visit. You have great nightlife, great food scene, really cool art and handicrafts. You also have the Giraffe Center right outside of Nairobi where you can kiss a giraffe. And beyond that, you have the coast, the Indian Ocean. So whether you're visiting Diani, Mombasa, or my favorite, Lamu, Kenya just has so much to offer. Traveling throughout Kenya and throughout Africa as a whole is just something a lot of people can get nervous about. But I really hope that through this journey and through my images and through the stories that I tell, people start to explore these countries and realize they're not dangerous. Of course, things happen, but no country in the world is completely safe and no country in the world is completely unsafe. So I hope to be able to change the narrative in that way. I think it's very important for people to travel and that doesn't mean that you have to go 10,000 miles from your home. It means that you can hop in a rental car or hop in your own car and drive 50 miles from your home. I think the importance of travel is just meeting new people and talking to people who might have ideas that are different from your own, who might have cultures different from your own. Travel really breaks down the barriers. It makes people understand that we are more similar than we are different. And that's what travel has taught me. I can land in a country where no one looks like me, where no one speaks English, and I've been met by open, warm, loving arms. People are mostly good, no matter what we're seeing in the news cycle, no matter the way that we all feel, and that is what travel can teach you. That makes me want to book a flight. <laughs> yes! <laughs>